Welcome back. We'll continue with the OSI model. And the, uh, now we're at layer three. Uh, we talked about the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer uh, for addressing data packets, routing the packets from the source of the destination through the network and ensuring data delivery. What it is responsible for is getting the packets from point A to point B. It's actually responsible for finding the destination network. Remember we talked about a little earlier that the IP, and this is where the IP addresses are down there, the logically addressing. The IP addresses are here, uh, but IP addresses can change. The data link layer, the one below it, are the permanent addresses, and we'll talk about a little bit later how we translate an IP address to a MAC address uh, or to a uh, data link address and make use of that address in order to deliver it to a specific um, device. So responsible for routing the packet. So we're talking about routers here with routing uh, from source to destination through the network and ensuring data delivery, uh, controlling congestion on the network by taking proper routing decisions. Uh, the packets can be marked as uh, a path can be marked as congestion. Uh, so we can control uh, what goes when, what path it may go. There may be multiple paths uh, to allow a device to get from one location to the other. So we might have, and routers are generally drawn as circles, a whole bunch of stuff in here. And we got uh, connected here and here and here and here and here and maybe here, here. So. The best path, depending on the protocols, and we'll talk about protocols in ICND2, uh, depending on the protocol, it will pick, it, the uh, uh, device will pick a specific path to go from one location to the other. So the best path might be here. It sure looks the shortest. This one is actually pretty short too, right? But if we have congestion on either or both of these, then we have an alternative to where this path might be the quickest. So we may pick, and, and different packets may pick different directions, and, and, and that's what we're going to talk about next, the transport layer. So we may have uh, packet one may go here, two may go in this direction, and three in this direction, or whatever else. Or one, actually let's go, let's go a different way to uh, kind of make them not so much in the order that, uh, let's say that one goes this way, the longer distance, two goes this way, three goes this way, whatever else. And let's say that this is the slowest, and this is maybe the fastest. Actually, let's have three be the fastest. It's there first. So the Packets get there is three, two, one. Not going to make a whole lot of sense. And I was in the Navy for a lot of years, and what I always talk about, and, and I'm getting ahead of myself when we talk about the transport layer, is, is and this was before the, the days of email. Uh, I would mail letters to my wife, and I'd number them one, two, three, four, five. She might get them three, four, two, one, for instance. And you know that things that are addressed in out of order with another one. Talk about something in, in uh, uh, three and two are not there yet, so you have to, you know you have to wait. So uh, responsible for congestion control and picking. Say so responsible for addressing, routing the packets through the network and ensuring data delivery. Controlling congestion on the network by taking proper routing decisions. Uh, protocols for interconnecting two or more similar networks. Similar networks would be like or more IP networks that we're going to connect uh, together. Logical IP addressing. IPv4 looks something like 192.168.3.1. Uh, IPv6 is going to be hexadecimal. Uh, packet forwarding means that it comes up to one of these devices here. If we're in here and we're going, we're, going, we're, we're connecting our network from here into this device, 
uh, packet forwarding, it's going to send it out one of these three interfaces to get to the eventual destination. So that's what packet forwarding, forwarding is. And packet determination shoots the best route. The best route may actually change if we have multiple uh, capabilities to get from uh, A to B. So uh, the network layer uh, responsible for getting the information from point A to point B. Logical addressing, the IP addresses are there, path determination. Routing, routers are the devices that are here and routing is, is what happens. The transport layer is one that does a couple of things or at least the uh, transport layer protocol TCP. There are two protocols TCP and UDP that work here and we're going to talk about those going to be the, uh, the, the next topic will be TCP and UDP comparing the two. When we initiate a connection, and this is TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, when we initiate a connection we do this thing called a three-way handshake three-way handshake in order to establish a connection. It's much like a telephone call. Uh, I know most people text now, but if you actually use a telephone call, you dial up a number, and the other end, hello, hello this is, and then you establish what's going on, and then you send the data. TCP does essentially the same thing. It sends a thing called a send or a synchronization packet uh, to start when it says, I want to have a conversation. And what it does when it says, I want to have this conversation, and down here we have packet 0 and X0, these are going to be the packet numbers. It establishes a numbering system. And the numbering system is not 0, 1, 2. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very long number to do these things. So we tell a web server, for instance, I want to have a conversation. I want to connect to a web page. So I send a synchronization packet. It acknowledges my synchronization packet, saying I want to have a conversation, and accepts my number system and then sends its own synchronization packet which again is a numbering system establishment. It comes back to me. Then I complete the connection by acknowledging its synchronization packet. Once that happens we now have established the connection. Uh, and the TCP is called connection oriented. So we establish the connection before we start sending data. Once we send the data, the packets are numbered, and that's back to we do the three-way handshake, and remember the send was establishing the numbering system. So we send packet zero, receive packet zero, acknowledge packet zero, we send packet one, receive acknowledge packet one, we send packet two, it doesn't get there. We send packet three and receive packet three, and we discard and we say acknowledge one, which says that I acknowledge receipt of packet one sent two. Uh, two had been sent, but it didn't get there yet. So what the system will do, acknowledge one, I got one, send two. Okay, I'll send two again. So eventually we will uh, we'll send two and we'll go on down here, packet two. We'll go down here, packet three and on down, packet four, discard act one. Five Act One. So we want to ensure that we get all of the information, and that's what TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol, does for us. And finally, down here, we send two again, and we Act Two. And after we do that, we can continue with three, four, and five on down the line. So the transport layer accepts data from the upper layers and breaks it into smaller units known as segments. So transport segments, and these segments, and this is called a, B, a, a, P, B, a, PDU, a PDU, Protocol Data Unit, the BPDU is a bridge protocol data unit, we'll do those later, but PDU, Protocol Data Unit, uh, and what we have is we start out with data, don't some people fight back, so we start out with data at the top, transport segments, IP, uh, network packets, packets, transport frames, or excuse me, data link frames, and then the physical layer is bit. So the acronym to remember the PDUs is don't some people fight back. D, data, don't, data, some, transport segments, uh, network packets, 
uh, data link frames, and then a physical layer bits. Uh, passes these segments to the lower layer layers and ensures that all segments arrive correctly at the receiving end, and that's what this, this numbering system is about over here. Adds a sequence number to each segment, which helps reconstruct the original sequence uh, if they are received out of order back to the uh, uh, network layer we might have multiple paths and if we get uh, congestion one uh, packet may go one direction another the other direction the transport layer numbers those things so that when they get back there much like the layers to my wife they can be put back in order so that they make sense responsible for error correction and sending acknowledgments uh, at the network layer the, the network layer doesn't do any of this. This is all happens at the transport layer, the numbering system, the acknowledgments, and the resend if it doesn't get there. So that is the uh, transport layer. Session layer uh, controls dialogue connections between computers. Uh, establishes, maintains, terminates connections between local and remote applications. We may have more than one session running on a machine, and you've seen that. You go to two or three different uh, uh, websites. You may have a couple of, of uh, applications running. You may have an email client running and a, and a web browser running and then doing a download or connected to your Dropbox at the same time. And the session controls what goes on. Who gets uh, to use the uh, network at any given time? Uh, manages, terminates connections between local and remote application uh, full duplex half duplex simplex operation it it does those things establishes checkpointing adjournment termination and restart procedures restart if the system uh, crashes for instance when you come back up the session layer should re-establish you where you were in that particular session responsible for graceful close of sessions, orderly shutdown of the sessions. Uh, control the multiple bi-directional messages if we had multiple connections going on, different, as I said earlier, different uh, uh, applications running on the machine. Uh, allows the presentation layer seamless view of the incoming stream. So it, again, here we're supporting the layer above it. Presentation layer, uh, encoding the data into standard network compatible format, uh, HTML documents, uh, PDFs, uh, docs, uh, whatever we're going to, to use, JPEGs uh, for pictures. Uh, standard data formats used to enable the devices with different representation techniques to uh, communicate with each other. Uh, translations and intermediary format will change at the lower layer order to be sent from one to the other. But this is the presentation that's going to present the data uh, to the uh, application layer. Uh, define and negotiate the data formats checks to be sure that the device supports whatever the format is. And you may see those things. Your web browser may open a, a PDF, for instance, and then you get a doc file and you download it because it's not supported in the web browser itself. Uh, encryption uh, can be a service here. Now, this is going to be we're going to have two different ki kinds of encryptions. We're going to have uh, HTTPS, which is going to operate separately, and that's not what this is. This is uh, an, an encryption service that allows these things. The application layer closest to the user. And this again is network services, uh, email servers, uh, web servers, uh, file transfer terminal emulation or the remote uh, control or the remote uh, connection to uh, the, uh, the device. Those services are what operate at the application where this is not Microsoft Office uh, that works here, not that kind of application. Does not provide services to any other OSI layer because this is the peak, this is the top of what goes on. This is what all the other uh, layers are supporting is the application itself. It, it connects only to applications outside of the OSI model. Those applications, and here we get, we're using the same word for two different things, uh, 
a web browser would be an application which connects to the application layer of the OSI model to get a web page. It sends a get uh, command to get, a, to get a copy of the web page and then it presents it to us on our uh, screen. Uh, establishes the availability uh, of communication partners, uh, synchronizes the agreement on the procedure for error recovery for these things, and then controls the data integrity. Data integrity means that what was said is what we got so that something didn't change in route. This is a, another image that, that represents, we've got same layer and adjacent layer communication. In the uh, in these uh, devices, the same layer, the application layers, communicate with the application layer, presentation to presentation, session to session, transport to transport. So each layer communicates with the layer at the other device, device A and device B here. Uh, at, at the, at, they communicate at the same layer. They also communicate adjacent layer <coughs> 1 to 2, uh, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7. Each of the layers supports the layer above it. And then when we get over here into our, our data shipping, this is, these are the, the, the things that we're, we're kind of concerned with. We're actually going to go up to the transport layer when we start doing when we do these things, the get data, the network part, we've got routers in here that will connect these things together. So the physical data link network are the things that are going to be operating with on our routers, and this is what it shows up here in the intermediate nodes. Going across the network, getting, uh, getting data from point A to point B. The TCP IP model, very much the same, different names, we, we lump things together, uh, developed uh, to allow uh, the addition of the new technology and create a more flexible architecture uh, which allows modification of the existing protocols, initially referred to as the DOD model, later renamed to its two most important protocols, TCP and IP. As you can see, it does the same thing as the OSI model. But in here, we lump together the top three layers and call it the application layer. The host-to-host -host layer is the transport layer, and actually the DOD model is still called the transport. The network layer, the internetwork layer, kind of makes sense because it connects networks together. And that's what we do with it. We connect networks together. And then the, uh, the lower two uh, layers of the OSI are lumped together as the network access layer, which again makes sense because we had MAC addresses here, physical addresses here, and we had cabling here, uh, connectors, RJ45s for instance. So what happens is the, the NIC, the network interface card, has the MAC address burned into it, and Cisco calls it a burned in address. So it has a physical address, a permanent address. It also has the connectors for the uh, media. So it really did operate at both layers. And it used to be on the old test is a, is a, is a NIC, a layer one or a layer two device. Well, it's really both. Uh, the answer, I think, was always layer two because of the MAC address, but connects to the media, RJ45 and all those things part of it. So this actually makes a whole lot more sense. The application and these things, as we said earlier, these things tend to be what are on the computer. Uh, this tends to be what's on the NIC. And these work together because the protocols we talk about is TCP IP, uh, generally speaking. So transport layer, uh, network IP, transport layer TCP, so we call it the TCP IP model. It really does uh, support what goes on. The OSI model is a model. It's not necessarily what things look like. And I know I'm, 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 I'm backtracking because uh, when it came out, people like uh, Netware, for instance, already had a protocol and it was a three layer. It didn't work. Uh, the link layer. Uh, the network access layer, the equivalent of both the physical and the data link, which we talked about a little bit earlier, cables, connectors, 
network cards like the OSI and like Layer 2, uh, the link layer and the TCP is concerned with the hardware address. The internet layer uh, directly with Layer 3 of the OSI model, the network layer, uh, routes data uh, source to destination, uh, addressing scheme, the IP addressing is still used here. Uh, once we get above, and in this case the network access layer, IP is IP is IP, TCP is TCP is TCP. The things that discriminate, distinguish uh, local area networks or different local area networks and wide area networks is actually going to be layer two and layer one, the things with the network access that we talk about. Routing packets to the remote, remote host, fragmentation and reassembly of data packets, if they're too big, uh, there may be fragmentation at the internet layer, breaking the packets up. Uh, the internet layer is where IP operates again. The host to host, the transport layer directly aligns to uh, layer four of the OSI model, uh, core of the TCP IP architecture. TCP and UDP operate at this layer and again that is the, uh, the topic of the, uh, of the next uh, uh, session. Uh, provides communication ser services directly to the application processes. Well, that means port numbers, kind of an interesting thing, and we'll talk about a number of those later, but let's just pick one here. Port 80, if we connect TCP port 80 to a device, that's going to be connected to HTTP, which would get us our web server, so that's the port number. So the, uh, provides communication service directly to the application processes. We're going to have in these things a, a thing called a socket. And a socket is an IP address of 192.168.3.2 and a port number. This says that 192.168.3.2 is the IP address of the web server and 80 says go to the web application, the HTTP application at the application wire. So port numbers are used along with IP addresses to create a socket which gives us a connection much like an electrical socket when you plug it in you get electricity out. When you plug in a socket with TCP and IP you get information out. Application layer 5, 6, and 7 of the OSI model uh, applications file transfer, troubleshooting, uh, internet activities uh, supports network APIs, application programming interfaces, and allows programs to access the network. So all of those different things that we talked about in the upper three layers are all lumped together. A couple of uh, additional slides, I guess, uh, protocols here. The protocols at the application layer, HTTP, FTP, terms that you probably have heard, Telnet, SMTP, uh, POP3, are all TCP related. TCP, remember, use the three-way handshake connection oriented in order uh, to start up. DNS, uh, SNMP, TFTP, NetBIOS, and some others use UDP. UDP is connection less and we're going to talk, we're going to discuss those here in just a couple of minutes. The internet, the uh, uh, layer for the network or the internet layer, ICMP, are address resolution protocol ICMP is P. And then down at network access we have uh, protocols Ethernet, FDDI, token ring, and other topologies. Uh, FDI, FDDI is a fiber. We could also we also have uh, maybe PPP point-to-point -point protocol uh, for wide area network and HDLC, the uh, Cisco proprietary. So a drink with a fire hose Again, but the layered model, the benefits, less complex compared to, to not using those. It allows us to break the big problem into seven smaller problems. Uh, standard interfaces, standardization uh, between each layer allows the multiple vendors uh, to create the products that we use. Uh, easier to learn, uh, can more easily discuss and learn about the many details of protocol uh, specifications if, if we look one layer at a time. Easier to develop, uh, reduces the complexity, easier, uh, allows easier program changes than the one that we're going through now, obviously, IPv4 to IPv6. 
multi-vendor uh, interoperability, which we talked about, and then modular in, in engineering. One vendor can write uh, the software and implements the higher layers. Uh, and this is the same uh, slide that we started out with. But why do we use these things? It does simplify things, even though right now it probably doesn't seem like it simplifies things, and allows us to uh, do better troubleshooting and to, and to uh, break a big problem into multiple smaller problems. So that should take care of uh, the uh, uh, models, the OSI and the TCP IP model. We'll talk about TCP and UDP in the next segment. Hope you'll join me there.